So the troubleshooting steps should start from the wall outlet that is where the power source should come from. Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. It's Tutor Correct here, your online common sense tutor. And today I will be showing you on how to properly troubleshoot a printer that has a power issue. It won't turn on. Okay, so uh, what we have here is an Epson L3110. I will be showing you the procedure on how we will be able to find out what happens or what went wrong why the printer will not turn on so obviously our printer is an electronic device it needs an electricity so it, it has no power meaning to say that the issue is with the power distribution okay so if you are new to this channel please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated for the next videos that we'll have in the future so before we'll start I would like to uh, thank you for my subscribers for uh, patronizing our videos and for supporting my channel and supporting me and for everything. God bless you guys. Let's watch this. Alright guys, so since we will be dealing with power issue, we need to use tools that will determine if the power is flowing properly or correctly inside the printer from the source itself. So we will need to use a multimeter. So this multimeter is a tool to determine the electricity's um, voltage, current, and resistance. So uh, the use of this multimeter can also be accessed through this link, this link. So you will be able to find out how this multimeter is being used, okay? So also we will be using a screwdriver for us to be able to uh, disassemble the printer in case that we need to open it up and to find the uh, problem on the printer itself. So the troubleshooting steps should start from the wall outlet that is where the power source should come from and right after that it will pass through the power cord and also to the power supply unit and also we will check the switch if the switches are properly working and then the connection to the motherboard because the last thing that we should check is the motherboard and if the motherboard is still not responding meaning to say that the motherboard needs a replacement. But of course, since uh, we will be trying to troubleshoot the uh, simpler parts or simpler components of this printer, then hopefully the problem that we can encounter is very much simple for us to be able to face it right away at our own um, capacity. Okay, so this, will, this video will only serve as a guide for us to be able to, um, to fix such kind of simple problems. So if you're ready to watch the video, let's go now! So this is how you check if the power source has the uh, right power or voltage. So we have here the multimeter. We will set this one to the uh, alternating current setup. So we will set it to the closest higher voltage which is 750. Because here in the Philippines we have 220 to 250 volts on our wall outlet. So uh, it shows that here that we have zero and uh, the probes we will set here uh, on this outlet and we will see all right so as you can see you have 217 to 20 something voltage like that so it's not so constant because we don't have the automatic voltage regulator so next thing is that we will check also if the power cord has enough um, the power cord has the uh, voltage that is correct so what we're going to do is to plug this power cord and same thing will happen we will check it using this probe so the same settings so we have 750 volts alternating current so let's place it up here and let's see if it's uh, if it is uh, having a reading okay so this one right so as you can see the power is there so since the power cord and the power outlet are good then we need to check the um, the power supply unit inside this printer so let's disassemble the printer
So the power supply unit is found here. So this one is the power supply unit. Okay, so let's have, a take, let's have to take a closer look. This is the power supply unit. That's uh, where the AC adapter is connected. And this power supply unit converts that alternating current into the amount of voltage required by this motherboard for it to power on the system. Okay, so the connection is here. So let's try to find it out. Okay, so the power supply unit is this one. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Power supply unit. Okay, so if this power supply unit gives off the right amount of power, then uh, there's no problem with that. So let's check. Okay, so let's have a closer look first. Connect this uh, AC adapter and connect to the power outlet. All right, so we have here the connection of the power supply unit from this area, this one, going out there to the motherboard. So uh, we will check if uh, how much is the voltage being released. So let's set it to uh, 200 volts DC and see if there is power. So red should be connected to red and of course black to black. Okay, so let's check. Okay, so we see here that there's power in the power supply unit, so there's no problem. Okay, so the next step is we're going to check the switch, which is located on the scanner unit. So here is a set of switch and we have here the connections. So we can only have access to these power buttons if we're going to disassemble this scanner unit. So I'll show you how. So using the screwdriver, I will be, um, I'll be trying to um, disassemble this one so we have screws right here so we have one we have two three screws that uh, we just have removed from this scanner unit so you can try to pull it out and see if how's the um, how's this power switch there you go Just be careful not to break any part of it because you will have another set of problems in case you break, you have unintentionally broken any piece or any part here. So we need to open it up. Okay, so just be careful. Super duper extra careful. First, there we go. First, be able to expose. Oops, my bad. Expose the parts here inside. There you go. And here goes the power switch. This one. So, what we're going to do is to remove this one. Okay. So, we will be able to. Um, test the switches if they are working fine right so we have here okay so let's focus on the switch so we have three switches here it's for uh, power okay so let's 
take a look at this. There we go. Power. been separated as you can see here there there you go this one right here is the power button so again we will use a multimeter and let's set it to a uh, we can set to the diode part because uh, we're going to check the continuity if the switch works or not or you can set somewhere around here so this principle is that if the switch is uh, closed then you will see that it's moving it's going zero or close to zero there you go because uh, if it's not connected then it will remain as one because the electricity could not uh, move from one point to another but if they are connected surely it can move from one place to or one point to another so over here the switch so switch one okay so we just need to connect both of this and let's try to power the switch on and see if it moves right there. So as you can see, the power button is working so there's no problem with the power button. If it happens that nothing, uh, no response can be observed when you test through the multimeter while pressing this power switch then you need to replace this switch and just solder it on this position for you to be able to have that new switch that will work for your printer to solve the problem about no power issue okay so that's it all right guys so those are the steps on how to properly troubleshoot a no power printer so, just a review, you need to check the wall outlet as a source of power, next the power cord, the power supply unit, the switch, and its connection to this motherboard. If still nothing happens, then the possibility is the motherboard is broken, which I can advise that you need to buy a new printer because the motherboard costs a lot. It's about 40 to 50% price of your printer. So if your printer is already old, then you can buy a new one. But if it is still new, then you can try to replace it with a surplus part from an online store or from a printer shop, which is um, selling used motherboards. Okay, so those are the steps and those are the uh, things that we should do if ever we have problems with our printer, which is an Epson L3110 or any other printers because the principle still applies the same okay so guys thank you very much for watching and watch out for the next videos that i may release in the future and thank you for subscribing and for liking my videos if you do have any other concerns wherein you want to understand um, how to troubleshoot some things about printer or computer please feel free to comment down below and i will be glad to assist you and see what we can do with those concerns so again, it's Tutor right here. I'll be saying keep safe and have a great day. Bye-bye.